Good morning all. Mass today is coming from the Mother Church of the Paulist Fathers. Good afternoon all, Father John Collins here, welcoming you to the Mother Church of the Paulist Fathers in Midtown Manhattan. We are gathered on this Thursday of the 11th week in ordinary time, celebrating the sacred mysteries in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, the unity of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we do gather to celebrate the sacred mysteries, God's holy presence, we call to mind our sins, trusting God present among us, delights in forgiving us our sins. Lord have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, loose us from our bonds, bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. This we pray, gracious God, with all of our prayers this Thursday. In his name, Jesus, we pray. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. One God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. The staff of bread he shattered, in his zeal he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Zinai and at Herb avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses. You are destined, it is written, in time to come, to put an end to the wrath before the day of the Lord. Turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who, has, who shall see and have seen you, and who, who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death our name will not be such. O Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, brought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath his flesh was brought back into life. In life he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice, rejoice in, in the, the Lord, Lord, you just. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him, justice and judgment on the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world, the earth sees and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. All who worship graven things are put to shame. All who glory in the things of naught. All gods are prostrate before him. Rejoice in the Lord, you just.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you ought to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, <clears throat> but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. <clears throat> But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. God. The name ring a bell? Of course it does. Among you wonderful and faithful disciples who have joined us and many others beside for this celebration of Mass on this Thursday, God. What I'm trying to do is kind of interest you so I can bring you into the words of Jesus today in such a way that they can speak to our lives, add to our story. So I'm going to tell you a little story about my mother. My mother and God had a number of things in common. Like all of us, we all have a lot in common with God. But one thing in particular, which kind of shines through today's gospel, I want to highlight as one of the ways that my mother shared some of God's values. When I'd be home for a visit, and I was born way uptown here in Manhattan, and I'd be going up to church of a Sunday to say Mass, my mother with me. As we were walking up Broadway to Good Shepherd Church, my mother in her wonderful Irish brogue would tell me, don't talk too much, she says. You all talk too much, she says. Now, if it was the Easter season, for instance, she'd say, get up in the pulpit, say, happy Easter and sit down, she says. We all know the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, she said. We don't need to keep hearing that over and over again. I'm hearing my mother telling me, don't preach so much. It's kind of echoing the words of Jesus here today about not babbling. I think I'd have to admit right up front, I neither take my mother's advice to heart and I don't know if I don't do too much babbling anyway, despite what Jesus says, but that's what he says, don't babble. Yeah, I'll talk to him. Well, what are we supposed to do if we don't babble? If we don't have our little prayer cards and we don't have all of our devotions to go through, what are we supposed to do when it comes to prayer? Nothing. Nothing. Our job is to show up. Here I am and let God do the work in us. God always does the work in us anyway. I read once in a book, the author asked, who is it you waste time with? You've just told yourself who your friends are. That friendship or love is a matter of wasting time with others. We're not trying to sell them anything or convince them of anything or convert them to some point of view. We just spend time in their presence. Wasting time even in their presence may be one of the most valuable things we can do in life. That's the essence of prayer. 
wasting time in the presence of God, letting God do God's work in us, which is to remind us that we are loved, cherished, coddled, and embraced. Peace. Let us pray. Holy One, lift that burden that we may feel of multiple prayers, and let us just put ourselves in your holy presence that you may renew us and make us fresh. For this, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who struggle in our world, especially this time of this terrible virus, for people who have died, for people who are in the throes of it, uh, we pray to the Lord and for the wonderful people who work with us uh, who may be sick and the people who are sick, who really do put their lives on the line, guard them, protect them, uh, 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 heal them too, gracious God. Let us pray to the Lord. And the most neglected, the poor, who are always get the short end of everything, that somehow maybe during this virus, and even these days of protest, that the poor may be looked upon with greater affection and inclusion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and I ask you to take the prayers in your heart that you wish to place into the heart of God. For Kelly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear Holy One, hear us. We do turn to you. Fill us with everything that you wish to gift us with, and may we make ourselves open to those gift, gifts. Hear us, please, in his name, Jesus, we pray, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, one God forever and ever. Sisters, brothers, pray. Pray that your sacrifice and mine be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. O oh God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, Nourishing us, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body and in spirit. This we pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and granting for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, with the church throughout the world this Thursday, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please pray with me. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall.
that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, gave you thanks and praise, gracious God, shared it with his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, shared it with his disciples saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy Dolan, our Bishop. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching. We dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed indeed are we called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. At this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, for as, as this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. This we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us live in peace.